Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and we are talking with Andrea Caprio, and we are ready to say goodbye to yo-yo dieting and hit lasting weight loss. We are going to stop emotionally eating, and we're not going to get sidetracked so you can gain your confidence, gain your energy, and that's what we're talking about today, all about emotional eating. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably at one point or another have struggled with emotional eating. So Andrea, welcome. Thank you so much, Chantel, for having me on your amazing Wait Away, Waste Away uh, podcast. I'm really happy to be here. Great. Well, let's dive right into emotional eating. And I will give you a little bit of background because I want to really dig in deep with this. Um, so for me, I feel like I, before I started doing intermittent fasting, I was a big time emotional eater anytime I would get stressed. And and the truth is now, even today, there are times where I still will be like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm stressed. And my first reaction sometimes is to run to food. So when you have someone who feels that way, what are some of the things that you would, you know, like let's say we were in a coaching session. How would you coach me to try to say, all right, let's figure out where did this emotional eating begin and how do we get rid of it? Um, I love that question. I'm definitely up for the challenge here. So um, so first of all, um, Chantal, I would ask you, um, you know, where does that emotional eating come from, right? I like really, first of all, to um, apply my food freedom formula with the five steps. And the first one is always to recognize the root cause, right? So find out, okay, what are the root causes of emotional eating? So usually emotion in eating comes from emotion. So we would like to um, look at and saying, okay, what happened maybe that led to that emotional eating? Very often that is something that might happen or have ha happened in your childhood. Mm. So we can, for example, look at childhood trauma, but we can also look just at a so-called, you know, um, normal childhood, right? Where I give you just a sample. I had one client, for example, whose parents were in the evening, they were tired and they put the child in front of TV with a big bag of chips because they just needed a break. They were great parents. Everything was happy and glory, but they just needed some time. The child kind of thought, oh, my parents don't love me. They put me in front of TV, but the big bag of chips is my love, right? That gives me love and satisfaction. So later on in their adulthood or throughout their lives, they look, whenever they look for love, they will look into the bag of chips and eat it, of course, right? So these are patterns that sometimes can come from early childhood um, happenings, trauma, just life happenings or so, or anything in between. So we want to look at the emotional or the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. But we also want, at the other, on the other hand, look for the physical side, right? Because very often through um, unhealthy choices in life, whatever they are, right? It can be unhealthy lifestyle choices like stressful job, not sleeping enough, eating the wrong foods, eating what I call crappy foods, so processed foods or so, or whatever it is, it can be that maybe our hormones get imbalanced. It can be that our gut health get somehow compromised. And this can happen, obviously, and very often it can happen from one thing to the other. So we have a chain of different um, root causes that can develop. So we need to really dig deep and find out what are the root causes. For example, I have very often clients who you know, crave certain foods at certain times, which of course is led by the neurotransmitters. Serotonin is not only produced in the brain, but mostly actually 90% in your gut. So for example, if you have been eating unhealthy food, that might um, affect your serotonin uh, production. And that can then lead to more emotional eating. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know, a lot of people kind of say, well, there's so many people who run to food and I'm not alone. And it's, you know, it's common for people to turn to food for comfort and a way to cope with big, difficult feelings. And so, you know, they kind of rationalize it like, especially they're with, they're with friends 
who they're doing it to. Like when emotional eating happens, often, you know, you don't even realize you're doing it and you, in your mind, you're feeling you don't have other ways to cope. And so, especially if with your, you're with a group of friends and they do that as well. And, you know, you're at a part of a celebration and now you're eating. So, so let's, I want you to ask questions. So let's say you're, you're doing that for me, right? Because I, I want people to kind of go back to their childhood. So for me personally, the things that come to mind for me, my mother was a wonderful mother. She's a Christian counselor. And, but one of the things, if I was having a bad day, we have a place called TCBY. I don't know if you remember that. It was like the country's best yogurt. It was like a sweet frogs kind of version back then. And she'd be like, oh, you had a bad day? I'd be like, oh my gosh, I had a terrible day at school. She's like, do you want to go to TCBY? So it was like, bad day was like, let's fix that by going to the country's best yogurt. Or, um, you know, there was a place called Roy Rogers and they had like fried chicken and a salad bar. And she'd be saying things like, well, I had a bad day. I'm tired. I don't feel like cooking. Let's all go to Roy Rogers. And now we're happy, right? So we went from bad day to now we're going to Roy Rogers. So that's the only things that I can think about that happened to me in my childhood and a little bit of um, my uncle. Anytime I would gain a little bit of weight, he'd kind of, you know, kind of touch my stomach or something and be like, looks like you're eating a few too many cookies or you know, he'd say something about my weight. And that I remember that would really bother me. So for me, those are my two things that come up for me. So how would you address that to me to say, okay, how do I fix those, my trigger to go, okay, I'm having a bad day. Now I need to run to food. Right. Okay. So let me ask you, Chantel, um, when your mom at the time where you were, when you were a child, how, how old were you? What is the earliest memory of uh, when you were? Like nine, a child, probably nine or ten. Happened? Yeah. Nine. Okay. Somewhere around there. Okay. So when that happened, you come home and, you know, you had whatever bad day and your mom says, oh, let's, uh, you know, do the TCBY or, you know, go to Roy Rogers or whatever it is. How did it make you feel? It actually? made me feel loved. Like you cared about me that I'm having a bad day. And now you want to take me to one of these places to cheer me up. So it actually made me feel loved when she did that. Okay. So you are um, actually putting together the two occasions with love, right? Okay. What do you think would have been other ways that would have helped you at the time because you might have felt loved, of course, but maybe from now your adult self, if you look at your younger self and you would consult your younger self, right? Your nine-year-old self at the time, little Chantel, um, what do you think would have been maybe a little bit a better method that you could have um, put in place or your mom could have put in place that helped you actually better to overcome those um bad moments or difficult moments instead of going to food? I would say going for a walk. So if she just said, let's go for a walk and let's talk about what happened today, because she is a Christian counselor, so she's really good at kind of talking about, you know, how you're feeling and what's causing that stress. So like if you had a friend maybe that you could talk to, right, that was like yeah. if you had work stress or financial worries or health issues or relationship struggles, if you could call them and go for a walk, talk about those feelings, go for a walk, it kind of, you know, changes your emotions at that point. I think those talking and walking would be my two things that would really change how I was feeling in that state. And yeah, that's better than the food. That would be yes. talking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because at the time, yes, you did feel loved and, you know, it came from a good point of view. Of course, that's the way of your mom, right? To deal with that, maybe that comes from her own 
um, education or whatever it is. We don't know, and it's not really, you know, the question here. But you know now as your older self that for you it would have been much better to do that with a talk and walk to help you go actually deeper, find a real solution and not kind of drown it with food, right? Because in the way uh, the food there um, is more like a band-aid, right? It's not or did not give you really a solution. It was a short-term band-aid. It helped you in a short time to feel loved, to feel better. But you probably were still stuck with the same problem after. And you might have even felt very often quite yucky after still because your problem was not solved because you didn't talk. I just assume obviously here. And maybe you even ate too much and that might you make you feel even worse, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you wish you could have done at the time? Or that your mom would have done with you something else than walk and talk? And I love these, by the way. But maybe yeah, other I would ideas. say, I would say, finding other things that de-stressed me. You know, like her saying to me, "It sounds like you're really stressed right now. Could we find something else that we could do that might de-stress you right now?" So, like for me now, I know taking a bath um, really de-stresses me. I know that going to get a massage, like if maybe we wanted to go get foot massages, that would probably have really done it or go to the spa or get my nails done. Something like that that wasn't associated with food would be a better option. And, you know, as far as the emotional eating cycle happens, right, like it, it basically starts where something happens to upset you then you basically get an overwhelming urge to eat. And then the more you eat, the more you're feeling bad about yourself. And then you feel guilty and powerless over food. And then it just, that cycle just keeps happening over and over. So I think understanding that cycle and understanding that emotional hunger can't be filled with food, that the second that you think, okay, I want to run to food, um, that's going to be the way to to solve this. Like for her, if she would have said, let's stop right now and let's pray about this together. Like I know you had a bad day. Let's pray about it. Let's listen to worship music. Let's come up with a couple other ways, going for a walk, going for a bath, going for a massage, anything else to kind of cheer you up besides food. And then learning that literally by me running to the food, it's actually compounding the problem. So like for me to go, okay, if I run to food right now, my first reaction is I want to run to food. If I understand that running to food is going to compound the problem, then I have to find healthier ways to deal with my emotions. And then that trigger, it, there's got to be something that you kind of go up. Oh, if I use the food at any time, I know I'm going to compound the problem three times worse. I don't want to make it three times worse. I want to make it better. That that has to go on right here before you can get rid of it. Don't you agree? Absolutely. I agree. These are great insights from just, you know, um, me coaching you a little bit through that. Absolutely. So well done on this. Now, the question is recognizing what could have or what is the root cause initially in your childhood or earlier life or so is a great way. Um, and there are really great uh, insights you have. Now, the thing is, how can we take that into today, right? You mentioned already the walk, the talk, right? Recognizing it. So, I, first of all, um, accepting there is something, right? Accepting there's a trigger, knowing there's a trigger. Um, embracing it and then letting go is a very important part. You mentioned a bath, a massage, prayer, listening to some um, Christian music or you know whatever kind of way of where you uh, um, where you are allowed actually to deal with the problem, right? Uh, to meditate about it, whatever it is, right? So, what is it that um, having this insight from your earlier childhood, and of course. You know, I'm shortening it a little bit. Sometimes we have to go a little bit deeper into that. Um, but what is it you can do today that whenever you 
have a problem where you would run or an emotion where you would run to food, what could you do instead today? What are things that work? I mean, you mentioned a bath and a massage, so I guess there's still things today. Um, is, is there anything else? Yeah, so I think for me, the thing I have to remind myself of is that, you know, emotional hunger comes on very quickly, right? Like it almost hits you by an instant. You you get a phone call, it's a bad call. And literally for me, I have a snack, I had a snack drawer in my office. And as soon as like I'd get a bad call, I would literally notice I would go reach down, get my snack, and I would start eating it. And I have to remind myself that physical hunger comes on gradually. Like I will, if I'm physically hungry, that's why I love fasting so much. Because what fasting allows me to do is allows me to realize that I'm actually physic. am I physically hungry or am I emotionally hungry? So I first, my stomach's growling. Now I can go ding, 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 ding. Now I'm actually physically hungry because if I'm emotionally hungry, I'm going to start craving comfort foods. You know, w when you're physically hungry, almost anything sounds good, including healthy stuff like vegetables and stuff like that. If you're emotionally hungry, all of a sudden it's like, I need pizza, cookies, you know, just all the, the bad stuff. And emotional hunger really leads to mindless eating. So um, my one of my friends, <laughs> this is literally true. When I'm mindlessly eating, it's like you you literally, are, it's just you don't even realize you're eating because you're like, and let me take more and let me take more and let me take more. And you're eating fast and you don't even know that you're doing it. And so I just have to, for me, have to, the reason why I love fasting so much is because fasting allows my stomach to get to a growling position. Now I go up, oh, ding, ding, ding. I'm physically hungry. Now I can choose something healthy to eat. I can enjoy my food and not scarf it down because I'm physically hung. I mean, because I'm emotionally hungry. So, talk about some of the differences. So, where so let let little versus just, physical. Okay, so let's maybe just go a little bit back uh, a step, and uh, because you mentioned earlier, and I really would like you know to help people to get there is when you have you know this call that you mentioned earlier. Right, uh, and you normally would go to your cookie drawer. Um, I, what is it you could do instead? What could be there that you could uh, do instead uh, of reaching to your drawer, into your drawer, and eating that? Really, what? the only thing for me is going for a walk, like leaving okay. my desk, going straight. As even even as much as if I get a bad call, I have to take that phone call outside and start going for a walk immediately. Okay, I, even right. just sitting at my desk is not an option. So I have to literally pick up, take my phone. The good thing is I can walk anywhere, just go outside and start walking. That okay, is that's quite... the only thing I can do that I can think of. Can you think of some other things I could do if you're at your there are There are absolutely plenty. And uh, for example, um, you know, you can just drink a glass of water, for example. Um, you could have a healthy snack if that's within your eating window, for example. You could have a healthy snack that you have ready, um, which is better than eating the snacks. But ideally, you want, for example, do a pre-sync. But see, I disagree but... with you on that one. I disagree with you on that last one because to me, if you have, doesn't matter if you have a healthy snack or if you have a bad snack, because what you're doing, if you're not physically hungry, you're now training your body to go ahead and have a healthy snack. To me, it's like, no, you have to train your body to have a cup of hot tea or a cup of, cup of water or, a, you know. I agree. I agree on or something one. like that. Yeah, I agree. I'm not saying that you should replace it, but that could be a better option. We're looking at better. Reasons. It's better, but not the best, better. right? I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other option is, for example, having a breathing exercise, right? A short uh, breath exercise, breath work can be very helpful, a meditation. Um, you could journal, for example, a journal about your feelings. Um, you could talk about your feelings, whatever it is, if you don't like journaling, right? Uh, you could maybe call a friend or, you know, somebody you trust and you could talk it through uh, if that's an option. Which obviously, while you're on the call, might not be an option, but you know, it would be for immediately after. Um, 
It could be, like you said, drinking a, a warm cup of tea, uh, which I have here, for example. I love my tea, yeah. right? So the, the point is um, we all are different. And what works for one person might not necessarily work for the other. But what I recommend always is to first go back in the childhood, see what, you know, what comes up there, but then make a list of various things that you can do right now whenever you have your emotional moments. Some people, they have that when they have a difficult call. Sometimes they have it when they get home or when they get in the office or um, whatever it is, right? Uh, might be any time. So find out, first of all, when that happens. So I like really uh, to put down uh, that in a, a journal, you know, just journal about when each time. Some people don't know when that happens. They're actually not aware, right? So by writing down each time when you emotionally snack, you will realize, oh, it's each time I talk to my husband because he stresses me or whatever it is, right? And then you can actually from there say, okay, what else could I do? And make a list of your top 10 or top 20 or whatever things that you could think of uh, that you might be wanting to do and try out what works for you. I'd love for you guys to go to our Facebook group, the Intermittent Fasting and OMAD group. We're doing a sleep contest. We want to see how your sleep is doing. And if you've been out having fun and it's time to get your health routine back, then sleep is a really, really big part of it. And so we're going to do a little bit of a sleep contest. Go if you've got like an aura ring or something like that, you can post how much you're sleeping, but sleep is so key. It's the one thing that I feel like I've got so dialed in. And the only reason is because of my favorite product, which is the Magnesium Breakthrough by Bio Optimizers. It's the only one that contains seven forms of magnesium and it helps you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. It's a total game changer, and just so you know, it's a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, just return it, get all your money back. But I'm getting you 10% off. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash wasteaway, enter the code wasteaway for 10% off any order, and this special offer is only available at magbreakthrough.com slash wasteaway. Don't forget to put wasteaway for 10% off. I really like what you said about the talking to a friend because like at work, what I could do is grab my friend and say, can you take a quick break with me? Now, instead of managing my emotions in a way that doesn't, you know, have to revolve around food, I'm able to control my eating habits by going to her and saying, hey, I need to talk to you. I just got this call. Can you talk to me about this? And now I'm processing that without the food. So to me, that's just the best, yep. best, best way because now I'm expressing my emotions instead of stuffing my emotions. That is truly the key. Don't you agree? I fully agree. And I, I love the idea of a friend or family member, whoever that is, right? Somebody could be your coach, right? Your counselor or whatever. Or if you don't have that, then often, uh, for example, having a journal is a very, very good option. A lot of people uh, express that as well. And it might not be a journal. It might be that you draw or paint, you know, or you make music or, you know, something to get it out. Absolutely. The getting it out, acknowledging there is something and then being able to deal with it in a different way. I love it through breathing. Breathing is really, really helpful um, in this or can be helpful. doesn't work for everybody. So again, I go back to what works for one person might not work for the other person or is not liked by the other person. I mean, I have some people who say, look, Andrea, I hate journaling. Find me, help me with something else, right? There are so many things. It's just the right thing. I also like one thing, and I, I'm very much into habits formation to help especially people who have a lack of willpower, who struggle with self-sabotage, uh, etc., to overcome this. Because uh, just going back to um, those habits, most of us, hopefully, are brushing their teeth in the morning and the evening. Chantal, I guess you brush your teeth in the morning and the evening. You have beautiful teeth, so I'm sure you do that. Do you yeah. think about it much? No, I just do it. Exactly. That's my point. And most people will probably answer the same thing. They just do it. I just do it, right? I don't think much, very seldom that I think about it. 
And that is how we learn habits. And that is how we learn sustainable habits. And the big word is sustainable because if we try to reach our health goals, our weight, uh, weight loss goals, right? Intermittent fasting, whatever it is, right? Whenever we try to adapt uh, and, and reach a goal or so, we need to stay on track. Most people struggle after some time, might be after a few days, a few weeks, a few months, whatever, they fall off the wagon. But when we have habits like brushing our teeth so ingrained, we don't fall off the wagon. We just do them because we don't think. So the way I'm working with uh, learning healthy habits is that I start super small. And there's, there are a couple of books uh, around habits. Atomic Habits is one well known. I really like also Tiny Habits. I'm sure you know that. Um, and with the Tiny Habits, it's really a three-step system that works on it. It's first of all, find the trigger, right? Chantal, you told me earlier that each time you're on the phone on a difficult talk, you want to go into your cookie or want it to go into your cookie drawer, right? So that would be the trigger, right? The difficult chat or call or whatever it is for somebody else might be. So you want to identify the trigger and then you want to identify the habit you want to implement or the replacement habit, right? Depends. So let's say you just want to drink more water because you want to hydrate. Obviously, then you would say, each time I'm on a difficult call, I will drink a glass of water. So the trigger is the difficult call. The new habit is the drinking the water. Okay. And then I want to celebrate yes or whatever other way your celebration happens, right? You might do a happy dance or whatever it is, right? So it's basically the trigger, the new habit, and the celebration. With the celebration, we rewire our mindset to crave the new habit because it goes back to the dopamine, right? Because we normally get the dopamine kick with the cookie drawer, right? That you mentioned earlier, whatever, you know, somebody else is craving. So to replace that, instead of craving that dopamine kick that helps us to overcome this difficult call, we then take actually the dopamine we get from the celebration, yes, whatever it is, right? And then we will crave the water habit. And that's how you implement new habits. So, so one of the things that I did, and I've written several books, one's called Waste Away, and that one, and another one called um, One Meal in a Tasting. And I've interviewed all these women who are thin, they've been thin their whole life, they've never run to food. And over and over when I, and I talk about it in the book, but I asked them the question, you know, well, when you're depressed, what do you do? And they say, you know, I might call a friend who makes me feel better. Or I play with my dog or, you know, and then I say, well, if you're anxious, what do you do? And they're like, you know, I might go for a walk or, you know, dance to a song or if I'm exhausted. And I say, what well, if you're exhausted, what do you do? And they're like, well, if I'm exhausted, I'll just take a nap or, you know, I'll take a bath or just take a wrap myself in a blanket and watch like a little show. But, you know, whatever it is, it's like, well, if you're bored, what do you do? Oh, I might just read a good book or I'll watch a good comedy show or I'll go for a walk or go get a foot massage. And it, it's just whatever you ask them, they come up with the right answer, right? Because <laughs> it's like if you ask somebody who's an emotional eater and you say, what do you do when you're anxious? What do you do when you're exhausted? What do you do when you're bored? What do you do when you're depressed? The truth is they probably say, you know, I'm going to eat. And so it's just so funny because when you ask a true thin eater who has no, you know, concern for food, they have the right answer. They just say, okay, well, these are the things that I do. And they found other things because they realize all those other things are not going to pro make the problem 10 times worse where... I'm now eating all this food, then I can't fit in any clothes, and now my health isn't good, and now I'm not feeling good, and all the other things that come from emotional eating. I absolutely must say I love that approach, that you interviewed all those non-emotional eaters, right? All those uh, people, women, people who haven't uh, had any issue with uh, food weight or whatever it is, right? Um, and it's absolutely true. Um 
I I personally believe that our society uh, is a lot at fault, right? The food industry mostly, because if you look how, you know, when you look as, at ads, right, advertisement, no matter if it's on TV or on computers or whatever it is, right, you see always that happy and sad moments are somehow celebrated with food or uh, dealt with with food, let's say, because obviously the sad moments are usually not that celebrated. But you look, you know, when somebody has a birthday, right, you have your friends with food and, you know, you have certain fast food ads or whatever it is, right? And it's always like you're with, a car, you know, with all your friends, you celebrate your birthday or whatever it is, and it's food. And equally, of course, whenever somebody is sad, it's always food, right? Um, so I believe really our society and, and the food industry mostly is to blame around that um, because it has, of course, increased. I mean, what we are experiencing today, emotional eating like we have today, did not exist thousands and thousands of years ago when there were the hunters and the gatherers, right? when we didn't have TV, when we didn't have, you know, all kind of uh, computers or so to be bombarded by information all the time. It just didn't exist. And it gets worse every every year. So obviously. Mm. Well, one of the things that, you know, I think is important is to learn to accept your feelings, even the bad ones, because, you know, it might seem like you're powerless over the food if you're in that position of emotional eating. And I know for me, we have um, these web developers that work at my company and they drive me crazy. I'm going to be honest, like absolutely crazy because I can't, I'm even though I have my degree in math and I actually have a minor in computer science, I can't do the coding. And so they'll be like, oh, that's going to take an extra week when I know it's not going, it's not going to take that long or, you know, I can't do it. And so I feel powerless. And when you feel powerless, that's when I, I would say is my number one emotion for me to feel powerless is my first reaction is wanting to eat and allowing myself to feel uncomfortable emotions is really important and it can seem scary, but I think, you know, allowing yourself to feel, you know, okay, right now I feel powerless because I can't do anything about these web problems. You know, I can't fix them. I'm just going to sit with these uncomfortable emotions. That is a, a piece that no one talks about because you have to be able to let yourself feel this emotional pain. And, and what happens with fasting, it, it's the most powerful thing because you really, you're, you're not allowing yourself to use food. And so your emotions actually get higher. And people don't realize that because when you are fasting, you actually can feel your emotions more because you didn't stuff it with the food. And it's, it's a hard transition but you need to become mindful and go, okay, how am I going to allow myself to sit with these uncomfortable feelings? And that's okay. And like you said, you know, take a few deep breaths and being able to, you know, acknowledge those painful feelings is another really big piece of it. Would you agree? I definitely agree. Um, so I would go still back to the root cause and find out when did you feel powerless when you were a child, right, or earlier, because it's there is a root cause that you feel particularly powerless um, to a point that you would eat emotionally. So I would again go back to the childhood and see where it is in a similar way. Uh, we've done it earlier. Um, but just to stay with your question here is that I love to do what I call the face and embrace method. It's a little exercise um, that I do. It's sort of like a meditation I guide my clients through. And uh, I think we have still a little bit of time. So can I do it with you in a yeah. kind of a quick way? Uh, yeah. Sort of five minutes or so. So I invite you just to um, close your eyes. And I want you to take a, a couple of deep breaths. And while you do that, I want to invite anybody who listens uh, to 
this little exercise to think about their feeling. They might not feel powerless. They might feel anxious or sad or whatever negative emotion they have they're dealing with. And obviously, they're usually um, maybe eating emotionally. So just think about that and breathe in it. And Chantal, I invite you now to imagine and everybody who does that with me with their own emotion, just translate it onto your own emotion. So think about um, Paula um, Powerless ringing at the door. So you're sitting in your own home or in your chair here, the door rings and just imagine the door ringing. You open the door and there stands Paula Paula Powerless, right? Now she stands there and you say, hey, Paula Powerless, lovely of you stepping by. Please come in and you invite her to sit next to you in your uh, sofa. You offer maybe some tea or coffee or water or whatever it is. And you say, hey, Paula, what are your, what is your issue? Why are you here? What are you here to teach me? And I want you just to have this little conversation in your own mind and thinking about what might Paula Powerless actually tell you? Why is she here? I would say I like to take action and have things work out perfectly all the time. And so when I feel like with the web developers, when I don't have control over making that happen, it makes me, I feel like they're holding me back from being able to take my business to the next level because I'm waiting on them to complete something. Great, wonderful. So how could that, for example, help you actually? So where would be the positive part of um, being powerless, right? Of having to wait uh, until the next step. What could be a positive spin there? Maybe just learning to be patient, learning to be kind even in the waiting and kind of say to myself, okay, if God wanted that to be done this quickly, then he would have allowed it to be done. Um, or I need to take action and get new web developers that can make things happen quicker. Maybe one yeah. or the One or the other. So... If you talk with Paula, imagine yourself and continue breathing, keep your eyes closed. Um, if you imagine yourself talking with Paula just now, what uh, is your feeling she would tell you would be the right answer here? I would say she would tell me to get new web developers that can make things happen faster. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So you got actually your solution. So what I would like you to do is that you continue sitting here with Paula Powerless. Um, enjoy her company. Enjoy her wisdom, the wisdom she gives you. Embrace it, right? Embrace what she has given you. Embrace the challenges there are there, right? Um, the moment that probably helps you actually to get to the next step, right? Because you might take action on this, you might not, whatever your choice is here, but it definitely gave you some wisdom. So just face face the issues. That's what you did talking with Paula here. Embrace it. So maybe you want to give her a hug now, you know, on the sofa, give her an imaginary hug. Mm -hmm. And then say to Paula, thank you, Paula. I really enjoyed uh, you stepping by, but now it's time for you to go. Um, I really appreciate that you gave me that wisdom. Here's the door. I open the door for you and I wave you goodbye and you wave her goodbye. And take a deep breath and take out the breath and let it go and open your eyes. I know you opened already your eyes, but for <laughs> everybody who's following here, please do that. It's a very, very powerful uh, way of facing, embracing and letting go of an issue. And I think, Chantal, you just got an insight here. Oh, I love that. Thank you for doing that exercise with me. That was awesome. And I do want to say um, to everyone listening, you know, making daily exercise a priority. I've been walking. My husband's on this kick where he wants to walk like five or six miles a day. And so I've been walking like four to five miles a day and I let him go a little bit longer but at a different time. But I've been walking at least four to five miles a day. And that's really done wonders in my as a powerful stress reducer. And so, you know, it's just easier than you think. It's just walking. Like you can 
talk on the phone or whatever you need to do when you're at work. Just if you're on a call, just go outside and start walking. And my other thing is to aim for eight hours of sleep at night. That's my kind of one claim to fame. I really get great sleep. And if you guys have heard me talk about the magnesium breakthrough that I use, um, you can use the code waste away and I, I'll put it in the chat, but it's waste away 10 or I think waste away works too. But getting plenty of rest will really help with appetite control and kind of reduce those food cravings. And that magnesium, I know if I don't take it, it's a game changer for me. And then the last one for me that I have really started doing, which I didn't do well, is just making time for relaxation and just giving yourself permission to take time away from the kids, away from everyone, uh, and just decompress and unwind, you know, take a break from all your responsibilities and just recharge your batteries and like figuring out what makes you relax. So that's kind of my final tips for the day. What are what would be something that you want listeners to know that you would say, these are some of the things that can really help them when they're in this emotional, you know, something gets them like the phone call we were talking about. What is something that kind of really would be some tips that you would add on to what I said? Oh, I, I love the tips and 100% agree. I mean, um, sleep is so important and so often underrated. And I have always my eight hours, so very seldom not. <laughs> so definitely. So I would say um, the one thing is um, is the mindset, right? Is to be super clear where you want to go uh, in your life and uh, support that in a way. For example, um, if you want to lose weight, right? Or if you want to achieve a certain health goal or, you know, a productivity goal or whatever it is, think as the person that you are already. So think as your future self. It's a very powerful thing to do as well. So if you want to lose weight, for example, um, ask yourself, if I am this future self, would I eat what I'm eating right now, right? Would I behave the way I'm behaving right now? Would I um, procrastinate that I do right now? Or whatever it is you're doing, would I say these words maybe, I don't know if you say maybe some not so nice uh, words to other people or whatever it is. So imagine yourself, you're already the future self and show up as your future self already today. And that is something very powerful to um, get a very fast transformation. Mm, I love that. Well, this has been wonderful. Tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you, and tell us about the webinar you have available. So thank you so much. So first of all, um, I'm sure you share this. My website is wellnessmethods.com. Um, there you can find all the information. There's lots of freebies on there. And of course, there's a little bit more if you would like to work with me. Most of my handles are wellness methods. So you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, on YouTube, and so on and so on. Um, so all over with wellness methods as the handle. And then I have a really great uh, workshop uh, coming up. It's my Food Freedom Foundation workshop where basically I help you to implement healthy habits to achieve food freedom. So a lot of the things we talked today are actually in my workshop and we go deeper. So I help you to implement this little sequence of the healthy habits I mentioned earlier. I help you to rewire your negative mindset to a positive mindset and so much more that helps you actually to slowly um, get into from, uh, you know, following uh, your, your dietings to actually staying on track with your healthy eating and lifestyle. And that is uh, wellnessmethods.com forward slash food freedom foundation workshop with slashes, but we will share that here as well. We love it. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.